Welcome to today's podcast of Everyone Has the Freedom to Choose. This is Deb King. Join us for today's Cornerstone Conversation, Night Vision. We would like to say the amount of hatred, violence, and persecution of those of faith is new. But history tells us a far different story. Regardless of the country or era, we have seen all three, hatred, violence, and persecution. That's why Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are still relevant today. We were born into a world at war, God versus Satan, good versus evil, hope versus despair. For Jesus' followers, we need not despair, for this is not our home. We are sojourners here, just going through for a small amount of time. Our home is in heaven, spending eternity with our Heavenly Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It is seeing our loved ones who have gone before us, cheering us on with the cloud of witnesses. That is where we place our hope. While we are here, we have work to do. God created us with all the gifts and talents needed to accomplish God's plans and purposes for our lives. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It is not about how good we can be, but about how we can make a difference, for good or evil, about being a reflection of our Heavenly Father to a world that is in pain and conflict. In the Old Testament, we have the Ten Commandments given to Moses. In general, regardless of your faith tradition, the Ten Commandments are compatible, and the principles are consistent with the tenets of faith for each. They provide a standard for all to follow. Jesus said the two greatest commandments are to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is to love others as he has loved us. When we break that down, the Ten Commandments fit right in. But Jesus goes even further by telling us in John 13, verse 34, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. He chose to lay down his life so that we, all of us, would have the freedom to choose to believe in him and follow him or not. He gave us an example of how to love even the unlovely because he loves them too. Over the years, I have had the easy to love and the not so easy. I have faced great joy, love, and extreme pain. Whether circumstances, family, heartache, abuse, health challenges, and the death of loved ones, I have been a widow twice. Through it all, I have learned that God is faithful and our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but with rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. God has given us tools to fight the enemy of our soul. Here are a few. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. James 4, verse 8a. Jesus spent time with his Father. All four Gospels speak about how Jesus would go and spend time with his Father. Matthew 14, verse 13. Mark 1, verse 35, Mark 6, verses 45 and 46, Mark 14, verses 32 to 34, Luke 4, verse 42, Luke 5, verse 16, Luke 6, verse 12, and John 6, verse 15. How much more do we need to spend time with our Heavenly Father, sometimes to be with Him needing nothing but His peace? Know who we are and whose we are. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 to 18. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past, He will be faithful in the present and the future. His love never changes. God's mercy and grace, Hebrews 4, verse 15 and 16. Sitting a while with Jesus, He is always there waiting for us to come and sit a while with Him. Jesus understands our pain, Hebrews 4, verse 15. Weapons of warfare, the name of Jesus. Philippians 2, verse 9, the armor of God, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23, Jesus' robe of righteousness, Isaiah 61, verse 10, the blood of Jesus, John 1, verse 7, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was with Jesus when he came up from the water and was being baptized by John and went into the desert when Satan was tempting Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit rose Jesus from the dead. That same Spirit is with us in our spirit when we invite the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit who speaks 
to our innermost being, guides us, and gives us what we need to go through what we face, good times and hard ones. Isaiah 11, verse 2. Micah 3, verse 8. Luke 3, verse 22. John 3, verses 6 to 8. John 14, verses 15 to 17. John 14, verse 26. Acts 2, verse 38. Romans 8, verses 5 and 6. Romans 8, verse 26. Romans 15, verse 13. I don't subscribe to the notion that the devil is responsible for every bad thing that happens to us. I'm not willing to give him that much credit. He is not behind every bush, but even if he were, that doesn't mean we should engage and try to defeat him. That is exactly what the demons want. Their job is to kill, steal, and destroy any he can. And he is good at it. If he can't destroy, then he is content to neutralize us and get our focus on him, not on God. Ours is to do the will of our Father in heaven, and that alone. Jesus gave us the two commands, love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love others as he has loved us. When we do this, we bring light into the darkness, strength to the weak, hope to the hopeless, and healing to the brokenhearted. That is doing the will of our Father in heaven. Is it easy? Probably not. But he loves us so much that he wants us to have everything we need to fulfill our God-given purpose and his plan for our lives. Thanks for listening and being a part of our conversation. You are welcome to pass it on. You can find us at www.debaking.com.